In this video, we're going, going to be converting fractions to decimals. Let's take a look at this example one, 5 over 24, or 5 24 To change this to a decimal, we're going to need to take the numerator and divide it by the denominator. Recall that we just need to slide the denominator over. So the 24, we just slide it over. And then the numerator, the 5, is going to go underneath. And then we ask ourselves, how many times does 24 go into 5? And it goes into 5 zero times. Then I'm going to add a decimal. And then I put a decimal at the top as well. And then I can add a 0. And then I ask, how many times does 24 go into 50? So I'm going to just start counting by 24. So 24 and then plus another 24 will be 48. And I know that if, you know, I go any higher than that, if I had 24 to 48, it's going to be too much. So two 24s is how many I need to go into 50. So two times 24 is 48. And then I'll subtract, and I'll go ahead and borrow from the 5 and make that a 4, and then add 10 to the 0. So 10 minus 8 equals 2, and 4 minus 4 is 0. And then I need to bring down um, something. You always have to bring down a number before you ask the question. That's why I had to bring the 0 down first. Then I can ask the question, how many times does 24 go into 20? And that's zero times. And then I'm going to just add another zero. And then I can ask the question again, how many times does 24 go into 200? So if I count by 20s, um, five 20s go into 100. So I'd say, you know around 9 maybe, 9 or 10, you would think would go into 200. 24 times 10 is 240, which would be too much. So it's probably really going to be 8 or 9. So 9 times 4 gives us 36. Carry the 3. 9 times 2 is 18 um, plus 3. We get 19, 20, 21. So 216. And 216 is too much, so I'm going to multiply 24 times 8 and see how that works out. Alright, so 4 times 8 is 32, carry the 3. 8 times 2 is 16, plus 3, we're at 19, so 192. And that will work. Um, 24 times 8 is what worked. 192 is close to 200, but it's not over 200. And then 200 minus 192 gives me a remainder of 8. And then I have to bring down a 0 before I ask the question. Alright, so how many times does 24 go into 80? So 20, 40, 60, 80. If I counted by 20s, that'd be 4 times. But 24 is over 20, so I'd say 3 times. So I'm going to try 24 times 3. 4 times 3 is 12, carry the 1. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. And we get 72. And if you think about adding 24 to that, it would be too much. So 3 24s is just the right number. So 3 times 24 is 72. And then we subtract, and we get 8. And then I bring down a 0. And then 24 goes into 80. Well, we just did this back here. 
So we know three times. And then when I subtract, I'll get eight again. And you're gonna see that this pattern will just continue. So I can go ahead and put a line over just the three. So this three is the only part that continues. So my answer is decimal two, zero, eight, three, and then I can just put a line over three because that'll be three, 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 three on forever and ever and ever because this is a decimal that is repeating. It has a pattern. It doesn't terminate. It never ends. All right, let's take a look at example two, 13 twentieths. We're going to convert this fraction to a decimal. Let's change the pen color. Use blue this time. The denominator you just carry across. And then the numerator you're going to put on the inside. So the 13 is being divided by the 20. And 20 goes into 13 zero times. And then I'm going to add a decimal here and a decimal here. And I'll add a zero here. And then we ask ourselves, how many times does 20 go into 130? So let's count by 20. So it goes 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, and then 140. And 140 is too much. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six times. Six times 20 is what we're gonna use. Six times 20 is 120. And then when you take 130 and you subtract 120, you get 10. And then I'll bring another zero down. And 20 goes into 100 five times. So I'll put a five here. Five times 20 is 100. And this one has a terminating decimal. We have a remainder of zero and there's nothing to bring down. So 13 twentieths as a decimal is equal to decimal 65 or 65 hundredths. Alright, let's look at just one more example. Thirty-seven thirtieths. So I'm going to just move the thirty over, and then the thirty-seven is going to go on the inside. And then we'll ask ourselves how many times does 30 go into 37, and that's one time. And then I subtract, and I get 7 left over. And then I'm going to need to add a decimal here, and a decimal here, and add a 0, and bring the 0 down. 30 goes into 70 twice. 30 times 2 is 60. We subtract and we get a remainder of 10. And then I have to bring down a zero. You always have to bring down a number before you ask the question. How many times does 30 go into 100? That's three times. 30, 60, 90. 30 times 3 is 90. 100 take away 90 is 10. Bring down another zero and we have another 100. And we just said that 30 goes into 100 three times. And we'll start to form this pattern. And you'll see that this is just going to be a repeating three at the end.
So 37 thirtieths is equal to 1.23, and then the 3 has a repeat bar over it because this is not a terminating decimal. It doesn't end. It goes on forever. It's what we call a repeating decimal. Now we could have also changed this originally into 1 and 7 thirtieths. And um, when you would take, if you take 7 and divide it by 30, you would just get that, this part right here, the 0.233, with the 3 repeating forever. You could do it either way. So hopefully this will help you to do the, the back of that worksheet.